I think this was a really good week for us. Uh, and the week actually started on Saturday um, just because of the way we've been doing the schedule with the Thursday night game. Um, and we got into some some game situation prep, I guess you would say, some of the stuff that you do in a game. Uh, and it was fun to, to see our players react to it and learn it. And obviously we still got uh, another week to get ready for our game, but this was really good for, for that and how you practice and how you prepare for it. So I was excited to see see how we did there. It's a big picture question, but Arkansas football has traditionally had, had to kind of cycle up to the big years and you were part of a cycle up when you were a head coach. What goes into that? What are the elements to, to cycle up and be competitive? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's a little bit different now than there because then you were like, you know, taking a lot of freshmen and growing them and um, you know, a lot of development, a lot of uh, patience. Uh, now it's, it's, you know, with that portal being open and everything like that, you got to do it much quicker. So I, I feel good about the way we've um, installed our offense, the guys that, that learned it in the spring and how well they did with it. And then what they did over the summer, I felt like we uh, have some knowledge of it or a lot of knowledge of it um, coming into the this uh, fall. Uh, and then the last, you know, the last week we're in the phase of cutting it back and starting to refine and start to understand who we are and what we do well and, um, and, and kind of, putting some some parts aside for later and working on other things that, hey, we got to get this down. We got to just keep working on it and get it down. So we're certainly not where we want to be right now, um, but we continue to improve and the players have great attitudes and are, are extremely uh, hardworking. What's been the, the biggest surprise about the offense this fall compared to maybe where you guys left in the spring. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I've always been hard on the biggest surprise and the biggest this and that, but um, I think what we've, what we uh, started when we first started out, the thing that shocked me the most was that we were a little bit behind the defensive line as far as how we ended spring and running the ball and protecting the quarterback. And I felt like it took us uh, four or five days. We started getting better came at it uh, another couple days were better uh, and I, now I feel like uh, our offensive line is working together and and uh, starting to see what we saw at the end of spring ball and uh, starting to actually go past where I, I feel like we were at the end of spring ball and we're executing and doing both being able to run the ball and throw it and you know you got to do both a week out now, have you begin to think about, you know, maybe the emotions that you'll feel, uh, you know, coaching an Arkansas football game again and, you know, wearing all the, the Razorback gear during a, a game that counts for the records? Gosh, I wish I could think about it, but I've been – coach has been grinding us, man. <laughs> I haven't had time to think about a whole lot. You know, we're here early in the morning and uh, getting home late at night. But, uh, you know, it'll be fun. I, I'm looking forward to it. I've always enjoyed going down to Little Rock and playing down in Little Rock and – um, you know, I, I think it'll be fun. I'm, I can't wait till we get down there. Sidelines or booth. Yeah. I'm going to be in the sideline. Uh, you know, you got the, the clicker now where you can talk to the quarterback and the earpiece and can't do that from upstairs. Uh, I thought about it. I thought I, I kind of liked it last year upstairs and, uh, calling the game and, and, you know, being away from all the elements that go down there. But I didn't like not being able to see the quarterback's eyes and how they were reacting and, you know, what what was going on on the sidelines. So I think it's the right decision to be down. Speaking of Taylor, uh, I know you've worked with him on a lot of fundamental technique things. How do you feel like he has done in that area? Do you ever catch him reverting some bad habits and stuff? And uh, what, just what are your thoughts overall on, on him and his ability to lead the team? Really excited about how coachable he's been and how much improvement he's made. Um, he's set in the way I want him to set now. He's got his delivery uh, where it needs to be. There's every now and then where he'll drop down a little bit and, and revert back to some old habits. Uh, but I really like how coachable he is and how much he works at it. And um, I think I think this week he's been uh, as good as he's been. Uh, his accuracy and making all the different throws and he can really throw it down the field, but he can also make them medium range throws you have to make to, to move the sticks. 
And when we think about your time here before, I always think about those wide receivers, Joe, Jarius, Greg, Kobe, and those guys. Um, and you've got a good looking group up here. I don't want to compare or anything, but do you feel like you have guys that maybe even could play next level type of football? I mean, is that the kind of talent you have at wide receiver? I feel like we do. I feel like we definitely have guys that will have the opportunity to play at, at the next level. You know, they got to show it though, and they got to prove it. Um, and I think that's what, when you look back and you think about those guys, those guys you just mentioned, you know, they went through some tough times and they, uh, you know, they got hit in the nose a few times and got knocked down and knocked out. And um, then they just decided, um, I think the way Joe tells it to me, they just decided they were going to go out and dominate every game. Um, like they felt everyone went after them when they were all true freshmen. So I feel like our attitude's right with our receivers now and our toughness is getting better and growing. Uh, but it's a game where, you know, you, you have to be mentally tough and you drop a ball, you forget about it and move on. And it's really what happens the next play, whether you make a big play, don't over celebrate it or you make a bad play and don't put your head down. You just got to play one play at a time. And I feel like we're learning that. Speaking of the wide receivers, how many do you feel comfortable playing in a game? I mean, how many would you like to be able to go through a game with? Yeah, I think we, I think you need to have at least six guys, um, sometimes five, to really rotate and keep guys fresh and use different personnel groupings. Uh, it would be nice if you could get up there to seven and and then a, an eighth guy that you you felt good about in case something happened. Um, but we're you know we're still working on that too, exactly seeing who's in the right spots and who's back and uh, you know how how we're going to rotate them in in the when we get to live action. Are you able to say if Patrick Kudis was back at practice and how he was looking? He's back doing some work. Yeah, he's back doing some work, and that's really encouraging to us, and uh, I feel good about it. And I, I think Coach Pitt's the one that uh, knows more about that than I do, but he has been back out there doing some work. If he isn't able to play, how confident are you in Marion Harris there? Very confident. Marion's done a really nice job. I think that's uh, what's helped us a lot in this last week and a half and our improvement and our confidence together and working together is him jumping in there at that left guard and, and doing a really, really good job. Bobby, speaking of your receiver rotation, I know we, we, we've had a lot of talk about uh, Harrison and kind of joking about his age and all that, but you know, going serious, what well, what kind of camp has he had? Where does he fit into the big picture? And just well, what's it like coaching a guy who's who's you know that old? Yeah, he's he fits in really well. I mean, he's big, physical, strong guy. Keeps getting better and better every day. His routes are getting more and more disciplined. He catches the ball and um, guys bounce off of him. I mean, he's he, he's got a chance to really help us a lot. What do you think about his personality? I mean, an older guy who's played pro ball, made some pretty big money when he signed, and he's out here, you know, as, as a walk-on. Yeah, I think he's been very humble and and uh, been good for everyone else to be around because you look at a guy that's that's been to the major leagues and been out there in the show, and, and now he's in here grinding with us, getting, you know, getting sore and, um, you know, understanding what it's like uh, just like everybody else. And he's been very, very humble and works extremely hard. Uh, he does his leadership with players on his own, you know, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and is very quiet in practice, but goes extremely hard. And um, everybody respects the way he works. Or you, You've you been on the other side of this FBS, FCS thing at Missouri State. And uh, UAPB is probably not as good as your teams were. But um, just, what what – What's the mindset when you're an, an FCS team and you're you're playing one of these big SEC or Big Twelve teams like like you guys did? Yeah, what we always just tried to do was go in and and you know play our best and compete and uh, try to shorten the game a little bit if we could when we were in there. Uh, I don't I don't really like the matchup. I you know I don't think it's I don't think it's really what we want in college football. Um, I've always felt like you know the big conferences should just take money and, and give it to the FCS and everybody play a more competitive schedule and uh, keep college football going. You know, when, when Mark Rick used to come to all the, the head coaches meetings, he was the, the person that stood up for college football and at every level. And he had a lot of really good ideas how we could take care and keep college football going at all the different um, levels that there is, not just at that very, very top. So, um, I think that they, you play those games in the FCS because you need it, 
And the one one thing about it is uh, football didn't get a lot of the money. It took care of all the other sports. So uh, it's just a necessity for FCS. But they could fix it and just give them the money. Well, what was your assessment of the scrimmage uh, last Thursday? Yeah, you know, I walked off the off the field not not very happy, and you know, feeling like we didn't uh, do as well as we needed to, and we didn't. Um, but we did start out quickly with the with the first group. Uh, we didn't move the ball. We came back, had a seventy yard touchdown pass, went and moved it again, got down there to score again, kicked a field goal. Um, the the week before in the scrimmage, our two offense did a really nice job against the one defense, and didn't didn't happen that way this time. You know, we got we got dominated a little bit. Um, our threes didn't play as well as they need to, uh, in the way they have been playing. Uh, but the ones continued to to do a good job. We got in the situation part of it. I thought we were really sharp, actually. Uh, you guys are going to play Oklahoma State in week two. You've been there. Uh, what's what's that like? And and a Mike Gundy team. Uh, what do you think of them? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a you know you don't want to talk about the game that we play two weeks from now. You know, but uh, having having played them, they're going to be very very uh, well coached. They're going to play hard on defense and their physical defensive team. Uh, and I couldn't tell you one bit about their offense because I haven't even watched their offense. Now, talking a bit about Andreas Poshka. Uh, what kind of campus he had? How's he looked, and how's he kind of you know adapted to his new surroundings? He's gotten a lot better. I'm I'm really proud of him. He, you know, he when he was here in the spring, uh, he's a very likable, happy uh, young man, but he needed to learn when it was serious and when you needed to get tougher and and uh, become a better, better player. And he's done that. He's learned that uh, what it's all about, the competitive spirit at this level and what I need to do. He continues to improve. Uh, he can not only uh, run block and pass protect, but he's catching the ball well now too. And one of the things we wanted to really emphasize with him was running after the catch because uh, in spring he didn't look good doing that. You know, he went down way too easy and – uh, but he's really improved on that also. I think he, you know, in the first scrimmage, he had a really big day, caught three passes in a row, scored on the last one, broke broke three or four tackles, uh, and it gave him a lot of confidence, and he continues to improve. He'll he'll be a part of our offense. Uh, Bobby, uh, first, first game is Thursday night, and then you've got the 11 o'clock kickoff at Oklahoma State. Do you feel pretty good about the depth there at your team? I mean, I know Taylor, you're not necessarily worried about numbers at quarterback, but otherwise you feel pretty good because it could be pretty hot at those games. You feel pretty good about the depth that you got to rotate in. Well, I feel good about our conditioning because we've been working hard at that and um, since all summer long. You know, our strength staff has done an unbelievable job on on the ability to gain strength and size and condition. You know, it's probably the most running I've been around as far as the way we condition and the way we're practicing now. We're taking longer racks and uh, going a little uh, very, very intense, trying to make sure that we're in game playing condition. Uh, but you always worry early in the year when you get those hot, humid days and depth does come into play. We've got to continue to improve on our depth and, and especially in certain positions. Do you. The last scrimmage they had eight interceptions. I'm sorry if somebody asked this, but I didn't hear it. Do uh, you feel like the interception issue has been solved pretty much? I mean, with eight, the last one, we don't know who threw them, but yeah, feel pretty good about that not being an issue going forward. Uh, we're working on it. I mean, you know, we're still learning and developing and finding out what we can do at each quarterback. And uh, we do we do know that tip balls get intercepted, and we've got to do a better job with that. But yeah, Taylor, Taylor had two interceptions. One was a tip ball. Um, could have been caught. Uh, nice play by the defensive back that broke the play up. And then another guy made the made the catch. So, uh, And then Malachi, you know, got a couple of picks against the one defense, which uh, was unfortunate for him. He usually takes care of the ball pretty well. Coach, what is it about Lucas that makes him so good? I mean, he's not extremely big or anything. Is it just athleticism, speed, like mindset? What is yeah. it? I mean, first of all, he's got great hand-eye coordination, his ability to adjust his body and make the catch. Um, he's he's very good on his route running, and he's tough. He's a tough young man. He doesn't, he doesn't shy away from anything. 
I assume we're going to see a lot of 12 personnel. You mentioned uh, Poshka, um, but Varky's gum seems like, I mean, he just looked kind of uncomfortable last year and just seems like he's in his element for some reason. Yeah, he's been up and down a little bit um, throughout the camp. You know, some of it is the, the being tough enough every every play to concentrate and focus, but he can sure make a lot of plays for us. He can run and catch and do that. I've been real impressed with Washington. You know, he's I didn't get to know him at all in spring. He was hurt the entire time, and um, he's really uh, a young man that's into it, really wants to be good, wants to learn the game and, and know everything about it. Uh, and he's got some size and strength to him that he'll definitely help us also. She mentioned the uh, in-helmet communication a little bit earlier. For you, what have been the biggest benefits in implementing the new system? I think I'm still learning about it right now because, like, the you know, the first couple of weeks, it really wasn't a lot of fun. It was a, it was a headache, you know, doing doing all that. And uh, it shut this off, that shut that off. It uh, and we're not the only ones that are having those type of problems because you have to be hooked up to two different things, one for the, the quarterback and then one for the staff. Um, so there's some work to get done, and uh, we need to be ready for probably not if it goes out in a game, but when it goes out. We need to be ready for it and be able to handle it when that happens. Yeah, kind of on that note, just what has been the biggest challenge in adjusting to that process and, and all the different yeah. issues? I mean, there's a couple of them. One is, you know, understanding the timing of when it clicks off. That's probably the biggest challenge and really knowing that and how much you, you know, can give the quarterback or how much you can help the quarterback. And I don't feel like we've had that much experience on that because just the two scrimmages in the stadium is when it really clicks off. In practice, I just do it myself. Um, and then, you know, the, the ability to focus and concentrate, uh, when the quarterback can't hear you, you know, can't get it and being able to stay calm, which I'm really good at. I'm really good yeah. at that. Addison Nichols was in here last week and raved about just kind of the freedom that you provide with checks along, I guess, the offensive line and the quarterback. Can you kind of explain why maybe offensive linemen like that freedom and why it's important for that to be a part of your offense? Addison, huh? He doesn't really figure it out yet. He's got the freedom to do exactly what we tell him to do. <laughs> That's the, always the freedom we give the quarterback. But uh, I, I'm in, I've been impressed with our quarterbacks. They they understand the run game, and that helps our offensive line a lot. And I've always felt like if you go into a game as a quarterback and you come out 100 percent in the run game you grade out a hundred percent in the run game so in other words we didn't run the ball into a bad play we got out of a bad play into a good play well we have a great chance to win the game so we've worked extremely hard at that and uh for the line it helps some i guess because they don't have to block every single look and they're anticipating and we're telling them sometimes what's what's happening you know hey we're telling you the nose is going to slant to the opposite a gap and certain communications that we have so i imagine they like that coach you mentioned before last time we talked to you you're trying to find your identity on the offense do you think you're seeing it now or there's still some elements that you're trying to find that identity yeah i mean we're still working on it we've got we've got some time to work on it but uh i feel better about understanding what we do best in the run game and you know, I've I've always been a, a flip the line guy. I know everyone knew that before when I was here, and uh, I quit doing that a couple of years ago, um, mainly for my assistant coaches. So when they went and interviewed, people didn't think they were crazy. <laughs> like, you know, they just no one in the country did it. Um, I did it to try to, you know, help young men um, do what they do best and be at a position. But so you know, run right, run left. What do we do with the tight end? How do we get to certain things? We're still working on th those parts of the identity, but I think we understand what we're doing in the run game. Um, our protections have been um, pretty solid. Our communication has been pretty solid on that, and then it's just the aspects of the passing game that we like the best, and we're we're getting closer on it. Which I know you obviously the goal is to score a touchdown every time, but it sounds like Shipley's had a pretty good ball uh, kicking the ball. How much confidence does it give you as a play caller when you've got a a kicker that's maybe dependable like that? I don't watch. I don't watch the kicker. You know, we just I quit watching kickers after last year's experience. 
I don't watch him at all. Not in practice, not nothing. I don't watch. I just, I ask him, did he make it? And they say yes or no. And that's all I know about kicking the ball. Um, I've been around some great kickers. Now we had the Lou Groza kicker, a uh, winner at, at Louisville one year and a little Art Carmody. Um, and we had a heck of a kicker here when I was here. But uh, last year's experience made me quit watch and don't watch practice. Um, and then hopefully they'll make it in the game. But I know this, when it's a two-minute drive, we're going to go try to score a touchdown. So you have a little bit of superstition in you? No, no, no none at all. Hey, uh, the um, the earpiece, uh, the quarterback here. You were in the quarterbacks here, I assume, when you were at Jacksonville. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You do it at Atlanta too. Is it is it pretty much the same thing then? It is. Yeah, it's the same. Pretty much the same exact operation. You know, you got a button that you push to put you live on the quarterback. Uh, it was a little bit different there because you didn't have um, another piece that you had to carry for your communication with the staff. It was all tied together. So it's a feel like I weigh 30 pounds more when you put all that stuff on and pack around. And uh, so, so it's a little different. Technology was better in 2001. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> so, um, I mean, like, how does that going to work? Like, do you see you, you guys, like, getting to the line of scrimmage faster because you got up until 15 seconds before the snap, like, talking to the quarterback about what you see out there? I mean, how is that – how is that going to be a benefit? And is, is it maybe a I big benefit? I think one of the biggest benefits that, that it'll have – in uh, college football today is huddling and then the defense not knowing what's coming because there's, you know, I remember when the Houston Astros had that big uh, deal about stealing signs. Well, that crap's been going on in college football for a long time and just as bad. Um, and I think this gives you an advantage offensively by huddling and not having to signal anything. The quarterback hearing you, calling the play, communicating it to everybody, and then going out and having to play football. 